Happy Pride. Did I miss anything? <laughs> okay. Uh, welcome to worship at Tabernacle Congregational Church, an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. Um, so, someone asked me just beforehand, do you think we'll have 10 people this morning? So it's like, it is a beautiful day, and I know folks are in other places as well. But we have the Zilber Beatles to cheer us up and get us going. <laughs> um, what announcements do you all have this morning? Kathy. I have a few. Isn't summer busy at times? So this week, good things coming our way. On Thursday is our pride service. Um, all are welcome to come. It's always a beautiful service. Um, different people from the community that will be here to join us. Uh, if anyone's able to bring or bake a few goodies to have after this service, um, just let me know uh, because we will have uh, refreshments following the service then. And then Saturday is the Pride Parade, a tabernacle marching a uh, group will meet at um, Shetland Park and um, go early because uh, the parking around Shetland Park isn't, there's not much available. Uh, they block it off for the parade. But contact Jack McLean if any questions. And then um, save the date for July 14th, more information to come. We're gonna have our Tabernacle Church picnic again this year. We're gonna be at the Willows. We're hoping to have as nice weather like we had last year. Um, but we will be right across from the arcade. We'll be there early to mark our spot and we'll have some great food and some great time together. So more to come. I'll send out a, a link for people to say what things to bring as we get closer. Thanks, Kathy. Anyone else have an announcement this morning? And for those of you on Zoom, I don't have a screen in here. I don't know what the issue is. But if you're on Zoom and you have an announcement, just unmute yourself and talk. I can't see you. Well, that would be why. I don't know. The old please stand by, we're having technical difficulties speech, right? So. Oh, look at that. We at least got a, we have a screen. I don't know if we have Zoom yet. Ah, there we are. It does help if you turn it on, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, do any of you have announcements? I can see you all now. Hearing none, I will turn it over to the Zilber Beatles for our prelude.
Good morning. Good morning. Call to worship. We believe God will save us in times of trouble. We believe. Help our unbelief. We know that God has saved us in the past, tending and helping us along the way. We know what God has done for us. Help us when we forget. We call on God's power when we feel powerless to respond, believing and knowing that God will save. We believe and we know that God will answer when we call. God opens our hearts today to encounter your love that acts with us and through us to bring flourishing to all of your creation. We come today to enter the dance of the Trinity, who is all powerful to save. Amen. May be seated. We come to hear God's call. Life is a mystery. We're surprised by what we hear. We walk by faith. We're invited to take part in God's new creation. Let us pray together our unison prayer saying, 
You who shepherd the lost and comfort the afflicted, guide our hands to touch the untouchable, our ears to listen to the hopeless, our eyes to see the misery of others, our hearts to feel the pain of prisoners. Empower us to take risks, to be channels of healing and mercy, so that this world may be a better place. Amen. God in community, holy and one, gather us into your heart, even as we pray as we are taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Fear not, for our creator, the loving maker of all reality, forgives us and redeems us from violence and oppression. God sows the good news in tiny seeds, inviting us to tend the soil of community and marvel as they grow. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. seated. Turn in the back of your New Century hymnal to page 631 for our Hebrew Bible reading, which is Psalm 20. Should be on the screen for those of you on Zoom. And as usual, um, for the response, Bo will play it through once. I'll sing it once, then you sing it with me, and then we'll sing it when those funny little R's appear. Answer us, O God, when we call together. Answer us, O God, when we call. May God answer you in the day of trouble. May God send you help from the sanctuary. May God remember all your offerings. May God grant you your heart's desire. Answer us, O oh God, when we call. May we shout for joy over your victory and in the name of our God, set up our banners. Now I know that God will help God's anointed. Some take pride in chariots and some in horses. They will collapse and fail, 
but we shall rise and stand upright. Answer us, O God, when we call. So reading from the Christian Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 to 17. So we are always confident even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense recompense i even looked that word up before sorry recompense for what has been done in the body whether good or evil therefore knowing the fear of the lord we try to persuade others but we ourselves are well known to god and i hope that we are also well known to your consciences we are not commending ourselves to you again but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. May God bless the reading and our understanding of this reading. Thank you, Carol. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our salvation. Amen. Belief leads us to pursue questions. Questions deepen our knowledge, and knowledge informs the shape and character of our belief. Perhaps most important, though, is the reality that growing in belief and knowledge is not just an academic exercise. It's part of living our faith. In Psalm 20, we see the interplay of belief and knowledge at work. From verses 1 through 5, the psalmist calls upon God to act on behalf of God's people out of a belief that these requests are in line with who God is and what God does. And then, in verse 6, we turn not from what the psalmist only believed about God to what is believed and known. One translation begins, Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. The psalmist believes and knows from experience that God is all-powerful to save. What would it look like to worship at the nexus of our belief and our experiential knowledge of God's power to save us? Not just save us for a life in heaven, 
but to save us here and now from all the ways sin impacts our own lives, both the sins we commit and the sins that are baked into our society. How can we believe with one another in God's powerful acts of salvation? How can we share our knowledge of God's saving acts on our behalf? Testimony? Yes. Intercessory prayer? Absolutely. Preaching? Hopefully. Some commentators consider that this is a royal psalm, an address from the people to the king. And certainly if you start at the end, that seems to track. Verse 9, give victory to the king, O Lord. Answer us when we call. The people are blessing the king, inviting God's protection, and asking that God bring to fruition all the plans that the leader has for the nation and the people. Verse 4, may God grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. The connecting moment then would be, how do we bless our leaders? How do we lift them up in prayer and offer them to God for daily direction and blessing? How do we do this even when we aren't too sure that we agree with the leader's heart's desire? Does Psalm 20 invite us to blindly accept any leader? Are we to assume that anyone who steps into a leadership role is ordained by God to have that position and therefore deserving of our total obedience? Boy, that's a hard sell in these divided political times, isn't it? Well, I like to consider that in the Episcopal Church, which I was brought up in when I was very small, as you know, started as the Church of England. And there most always is a prayer during the prayers of the people that asks for a blessing and wisdom for the president. It states, for our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us play, pray to the Lord. And the congregation respor, responds, Lord have mercy. How often have we included the president, Congress, or the Supreme Court in our prayers? Perhaps we should learn from Psalm 20. We may want think about starting to do that. Or what if we rethink it? What if we've gotten the direction wrong from the start? What if Psalm 20 is not about blessing the king or president, but about the king blessing the people? The king in ancient Israel was to point the people toward God. He was supposed to be the sign of God's well-being lived out throughout the nation. So is it too far-fetched to imagine that the king would bless the people as they seek to be the people of God at work in the world. The king wants the people to be sustained in difficult times and shout for joy in times of accomplishment. And surprisingly, the work of the people is the work of peace. We're not to trust in weapons of war, whether they're chariots, and horses or bombers and tanks, but to take pride in the name of the Lord 
one of which is called Prince of Peace. We can consider, amid all the blessing and working for peace, who the anointed is in verse 6. Maybe this is a call and response, and the king allows the people to respond, and they say, Now we know that the Lord will help his anointed. God will answer from God's holy heaven with mighty victories by God's right hand. They know that the king is appointed because actions match the purpose of bringing the nation before the Lord. Because priorities lead to the waging of peace and the honoring of all people. So the people add their voices to this litany and trust that the victories, victories of peace and community building, are from the hand of God. So they conclude by saying, give victory to the king. Let these efforts bear fruit. Let the nation honor even those on the margins. Let the immigrant find a welcome in our land. Let hope prevail and joy be seen. These are the answers they seek, the sign of God's presence in the working of leaders and people. The symbol for Jacob in that first verse is the beam, as in a roof beam. The main structure of the house, Jacob was the one who was renamed Israel, remember? The God of Jacob, then, is invoked to draw attention to the specific needs and calling of the covenant people. <coughs> they are the house of the Lord. They are the people of God. Psalm 20 invites us to identify <coughs> as the people who are called by God to be the light on the hill and the salt of the earth. We are the sign that God is at work in the world. We are the ones who live out ways of peace. It is within this relationship then that we come to know what it means to be saved. And the emphasis has always been more on what we are saved for than what we are saved from. We are saved to be that light, to be that salt. We are saved from fear and self-centeredness. And we are able to work in ways that align with the purpose of God, which we know from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. It was the reconciliation of the world. We are saved to participate in that reconciliation, to live out the ways of peace, to build up the body of Christ. <clears throat> Let us be about that business. Our hymn of response is just a closer walk with thee. The words are in your bulletin and on the screen for those who are on Zoom. Thou 
you to remain standing and uh, we'll ask for a gallery view those who are on zoom if you're willing to put your cameras on so we can all see each other there we go so let's wave to one another the peace of Christ be with you and also with you you can leave the gallery view up for our prayer time. You may be seated. Indeed, O oh God, we thank you for this gorgeous day. We thank you for the reminder of your part in creation as we see the beauty, the flowers, the times that people are having fun together. And we know that it's not all fun and games for everyone. We ask you to be with those who need to heal, who need your comfort, who need your support, as the psalmist said, that you do not leave us alone, that you do answer when we call. We ask that we do pray for the leaders of all nations as they work toward peace. And let us be examples and members in our community who walk the way of peace and that others know you by our love. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't have a bulletin, but I bet there's a hymn right now. Number 55 in the New Century Hymnal. And uh, on the screen for those of you who are on Zoom.
weekly reminder that you can leave your offerings in the plates by the door, you can mail them in, use the donate button on our website, and please join us in the Bigelow Room following the service for some refreshment. And may the dance of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and surround you this day and every day, saving you into a life of love and empowering you to witness to God's salvific work as we build the kingdom of God wherever we may go. Amen.